metal rails. In the late 1760s, the Coal Brookdale Company began to fix plates of cast iron to the upper surface of the wooden rails. This allowed a variation of gauge to be used. At first only balloon loops could be used for turning, but later, movable points were taken into use, that allowed for switching 18. A system was introduced in which unflanged wheels ran on L-shaped metal plates these became known as plateways. John Kerr, a Sheffield colliery manager, invented this flanged rail in 1787, though the exact date of this is disputed. The plate rail was taken up by Benjamin Outram for wagon ways serving his canals, manufacturing them at his Butterley Iron Works. In 1803, William Jessop opened the Surrey Iron Railway, a double-track plateway, erroneously sometimes cited as world's first public railway, in South London 19. Cast iron fish belly edge rail manufactured by Outram at the Butterley Company Ironworks for the Cromford and High Peak Railway 1831. These are smooth edge rails for wheels with flanges. Cast iron fish belly edge rail manufactured by Outram at the Butterley Company Ironworks for the Cromford and High Peak Railway 1831. These are smooth edge rails for wheels with flanges. Meanwhile, William Jessop had earlier used a form of all iron edge rail and flanged wheels successfully for an extension to the Charnwood Forest Canal at Nampanton, Lubborough, Leicestershire in 1789. In 1790, Jessop and his partner Routram began to manufacture edge rails. Jessop became a partner in the Butterley Company in 1790. The first public edgeway thus also first public railway built, was Lake Lock Railroad in 1796. Although the primary purpose of the line was to carry coal, it also carried passengers. These two systems of constructing iron railways, the L-plate rail and the smooth edge rail, continued to exist side by side until well on into the early 19th century. The flanged wheel and edge rail eventually proved its superiority, and became the standard for railways. Cast iron used in rails proved unsatisfactory, because it was brittle, and broke under heavy loads. The wrought iron invented by John Burke in 1820 replaced cast iron. Wrought iron usually simply referred to as iron was a ductile material that could undergo considerable deformation before breaking making it more suitable for iron rails. But iron was expensive to produce until Henry Court patented the puddling process in 1784. In 1783 Court also patented the rolling process, which was 15 times faster at consolidating and shaping iron than hammering 20. These processes greatly lowered the cost of producing iron and rails. The next important development in iron production was hot blast developed by James Beaumont Nielsen patented 1828, which considerably reduced the amount of coke fuel or charcoal needed to produce pig iron. 21 wrought iron was a soft material that contained included slag or dross. The softness and dross tended to make iron rails distort and delaminate and they lasted less than 10 years. Sometimes they lasted as little as one year under high traffic. All these developments in the production of iron eventually led to replacement of composite wood slash iron rails with superior or iron rails. The introduction of the Bessemer process, enabling steel to be made inexpensively, led to the era of great expansion of railways that began in the late 1860s. Steel rails lasted several times longer than iron 22, 23, 24 steel rails made heavier locomotives possible, allowing for longer trains, and improving the productivity of railroads 25 the Bessemer process introduced nitrogen into the steel, which caused the steel, to become brittle with age. The open hearth furnace began to replace the Bessemer process near the end of 19th century, improving the quality of steel, and further reducing costs. Thus steel completely replaced the use of iron in rails, thus becoming standard for all railways. The first passenger horse car or tram, 
Swansea and Mumbles Railway was opened between Swansea and Mumbles and Wales in 1807. 26 horse remained preferable mode for tram transport even after arrival of steam engines, well till the end of 19th century. The major reason was that the horse cars were clean as compared to steam-driven trams which caused smoke in city streets.